Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're taking a look at what's happening in the workforce. A number of people exited the workforce during the pandemic. In that reduction in workforce, participation is largely credited with the worker shortage. Some people chose to retire early. We've seen a big reduction in workforce participation over the last couple of years. People concluded they were tired of their old jobs, they liked the at-home environment, and they decided they could afford to retire early. The theory is that people in retirement spend less than they might at the peak of their career with kids and college and two cars and sports and so on. There's a number of different calculations out there for exactly how much money you need to retire. They're all a variation of the net present value calculation. But NPV calculations are complicated. Most people don't know how to perform that math. To make it easier, some financial planners use a very simplified math. There's the 4% rule, which is often quoted. It says that if you're going to spend X dollars a year in retirement and you plan to retire at age 55, then you should be spending no more than 4% of your retirement savings per year. It's a highly simplified calculation, and there's a number of variables which can erode the value of your retirement savings. The first question is, how much income do you really need to be spending on an annual basis? Many actuarial tables used by pension funds assume investment income of 8% per year, but that income has been cut down in recent years as a result of a decade of low interest rate policy. Many pre-retirees look at the value of their stock portfolio and their personal net worth, and they calculate the 4% based on the value of their home and their stock portfolio. If you had a portfolio worth a million dollars, and let's say that inflation was running at the government's benchmark of 2%, and let's say you were earning a conservative 4% in your retirement account, well, you would indeed need about a million dollars to last you all the way up to age 90. But there's a whole lot of assumptions in that calculation. What if you plan to live longer than 90? How about 95 or 100? With inflation running at 2%, that 40000 a year that you spend is going to look more like 97500 a year by the time you reach age 100. And if you're going to live to 100, you'll need more like $1.2 million to retire. But what if inflation is running higher than 2%? What if inflation is more like 6%? Well, in that case, you're going to need $3 million to retire. Or if inflation continues at the current 8.25% rate, then you won't need a million. You're going to need $5 million to retire. Should you plan for higher medical bills in the last few years of life? Should you plan on assisted living or skilled nursing? Maybe you need another half million to handle those end-of-life medical bills. And what if your stock portfolio just took a hit of 25 or 30% since the beginning of the year? That million dollars you had at the peak of the stock market is taking a hit and you're facing the prospect of running out of money before you die. There are millions of people who thought they had enough money to carry them through retirement and they're now facing the prospect of returning to work. Now remember, the current market conditions are the result of people exiting the workforce, causing staffing shortages and therefore delays in supply chains, and showing up in places all over the economy. I'll give you a simple example. Garden centers that sell seedlings have, right now, extremely low inventories. Shelves that in normal years would be selling out in July are now empty in the middle of May, at the start of the growing season. Now you might be wondering, how is it that a garden center business is having shortages of plants, After all, Mother Nature takes care of that, but the shortage of plants is directly a result of labor shortages. What about all those Bitcoin millionaires? With Bitcoin down 56% in the past six months, and many cryptocurrencies experiencing freefall, some have seen their newfound wealth evaporate and they too are facing the prospect of returning to the workforce. When we see a pullback in hiring as companies experience a reduction in earnings, you'll also see a wave of people re-entering the workforce at the same time. Now, the Federal Reserve pointed to strong underlying economic metrics for their more aggressive interest rate policy in their meeting last week. They pointed to strong ongoing hiring and historically low unemployment as to why they believe the economy has inherent robustness. But they've forgotten the jobs picture is the result of years of loose monetary policy. The demand for employees and the shortage of workers is a direct result of the monetary policy over the past decade. Asset price inflation is one of the reasons there's so few workers. And once people wake up and realize their retirement's at risk, they'll be forced to return to the workforce in large numbers. They'll realize that not only do they need to get a job, but the job market will quickly dry up when the economic downturn takes hold. Now, you won't see this narrative in the Wall Street Journal, and you won't see economists from the Federal Reserve making this assertion, and you will not see members of Congress talking about this in the middle of a midterm election campaign. 
I'm bringing this up to help you connect the dots so that you can see around corners and forecast a little bit into the future about what our economic conditions are going to look like only a few months from now. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. 